Morning. Greetings from Baker's Green Acres. I'm Mark. And uh, I had a question come in last night over the email. And what I think I'll do is I'll start answering some of these questions. Because I get lots of them. And uh, maybe I can uh, kill a couple birds with one stone here. Okay, the question was, uh, a young guy by the name of Levi, a friend of ours, wants to try and build a tractor to put a cow in. He said a cow. I think he means a calf because he wants to raise it for beef. Okay, first of all, let me clarify what a tractor is. This right behind me is a small chicken tractor. Okay, you can see it's a wood frame covered with poultry netting. And we can put chickens in there in the, in the summertime, of course. It's March right now, March 3rd or 4th or something like that. Monday, anyway. And uh, we can move that every day. This is a small one. This is for just a backyard person. And uh, by moving that every day, we distribute the manure around the yard. And uh, the chickens have something nice green to eat all the time. And it keeps things really clean and smells good. Chickens stay healthy, things like that. All right. Um, we, we actually have lots of those tractors here, bigger ones. And we raise quite a few chickens in the summertime that way. A chicken tractor for a cow or a calf and Levi's stressing one calf. He thinks he wants to make it out of cattle panels or calf panels, they're usually referred to. They're about 16 feet long and uh, about four feet high, a little higher maybe. <clears throat> and then use two by sixes around the outside to frame it in and probably staple that to it. And then his plan is to put some bicycle wheels on the back and then pick that pick it up by the front and move it a day, once a day, or a couple times a day is what he said. Well, first of all, uh, failures are good things. I got to say that. Failures are good things because when you make them, you won't go back to them. All right. But he's asking me for my opinion, so I'm going to give the opinion. All right. First of all, let me show you. See that behind me? That's about a one-year-old calf. See, she's pretty big, <clears throat> so to keep her in a 10 by 10 in the summertime, you'd, you'd have to move it twice a day. <clears throat> He's talking about something that's going to weigh quite a bit. <clears throat> if he can engineer it good enough, he wanted to put a top on it too for, um, you know, keeping the sun off of her. If he could engineer it good enough where it would hold together, I think it might take two guys to move it. If not... One guy's going to be working pretty hard. And then you're going to have this thing that's 10 feet by 10 feet. And after a while, you're going to get tired of it. And it's going to become an eyesore. And you've spent a lot of money on it. Those cattle panels are about 30 bucks a piece. So I'm thinking he's probably going to need three to make a 10 by 10. <clears throat> I have a better idea. <clears throat> and this is what we do. We do rotational <clears throat> grazing of cattle all the time. Um, let's say with your cattle panels and your two by sixes, you're going to be into it hundred bucks. Let's see, 30, 30, 90, you're going to be in it 150 bucks. Then your time, you're going to be up around 225, 225 bucks by the time you're done with it. And then you've got to consider your labor every day when you move the dumb thing, uh, or the, the thing. Um, and maybe another guy's got to come help you. So you're in town doing something, and you got to get home to move this thing. Also, otherwise, you're going to have a big greasy spot where that, that calf just, you know, just destroys the ground. You don't want to do that. And then in the wintertime, it's going to get stuck to the ground. Or you're going to have muddy times, and you're going to have a hard time moving it and all that. So you don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to invest in a small solar fencer. All right? I use them all the time. They're about this big, have a little panel on it that's a solar collector. They work great. Uh, you can't charge, you know, 10 miles with it, <clears throat> but you can charge, um, you know, uh, an eighth of a mile easily, easily. And cattle are pretty sensitive to electric shocks. So uh, you get that, get a spool of what they call poly wire. All this stuff is available online. Or you can get it like Farm and Fleet, Tractor Supply, stuff like that. Poly wire is uh, 
a kind of a very thin rope and it's got wires through it and there's some kinds to get some kinds to stay away from can't don't have time to go into it but then you get these movable step-in posts what I use is a, a steel post it's about this long they have a little curly tail on the top of it and uh, you just step them in you step them in every six feet and then you string your wire through it set your your fencer up and if you're only going to do one calf, which is probably a bad idea, two is better because they like to have a buddy to hang around with. And for economics too, you can get one of them butchered and sell it and that will probably pay for the first one for you to go in your freezer and pay for your labor. But that's a whole other lesson in economics. Um, and then you can move this fence uh, every couple of days or every day if you want. And the fence will be big enough to where you could make it in two sections. I mean, just think about this a little bit, Levi. I know you can come up with it in two sections. And then you fashion a little gate in there that the calf can go through. And then goes to the, the clean section or the, the fresh grass. And they'll gladly do that. So that's my recommendation. Thanks for asking. Remember, anyone can farm. Bye now.